I'm Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain. I'm here to teach beginners how to get started in China painting and hopefully encourage those of you that have been painting a while to paint along with us. And today we're going to be doing Zen Tangles. What the heck is a Zen Tangle? Well, a Zen Tangle is actually a doodle. It's um, a repetitive pattern that you repeat and it's usually within a pattern or within a, a drawing of some sort. It was originally, um, originally created by Richard Roberts and Maria Thomas. Um, the Zentangle I'm using is uh, a, a, a McKinsky pattern or based on a McKinsky pattern. I found it on Pinterest and there are a lot of Zentangles on Pinterest. You can easily find them there if you want. And um, I, I found it on Pinterest and I found that um, I needed to simplify it because for China painting, it was a little too complicated. So this is what our project hopefully will look like when we're all done. Let me hold it over here. This is, this is the project. Now this is on a round box and uh, that's what it's gonna look like. I did it in red and black. You can do it in pink and black. You can do it in turquoise and black. You could do it in any color you want. Somebody's favorite color is purple, do it in purple and black. I just did the red and black because it's a Valentine's Day Zen Tangle. And you know, if we don't get working on our Valentine's Day stuff now, we never get it done in time. If you're new to watching me today, I want you to know that um, I have a website and I have the line drawing out there for today's study. Uh, what you do is you take the line drawing, you cut it out, and you get yourself some transfer paper. I use Sorrel Wrap transfer paper. It's a non-wax finish. One side is dark, one side is light. I put the dark side on the piece like this and trace it. And when I take it off, I get a red tracing. Now it's not this dark red. It's this lighter red that you see over here. I used um, a red fine point Sharpie to get this red so you could see it more easily. So uh, you might wanna do this because especially with this, we're doing a black outline and black zen tangles and using either a pen or a line uh you know a liner and uh if you put the black over a black sharpie you won't be able to see it but trust me i tried it um the colors we're going to be using today will be black i'm using best black because i have it if you don't make sure you get the darkest black you can get and i have carnation like i said it can be any color if you're doing it for someone that likes purple do it in purple and black but um, if you don't have carnation, um, then what I would suggest is that you use Persian or blood red. And the other thing that might even work better for you is using a combination of the two if you have both. Put Persian on first, put the blood red on second, and I think you'll get a nice deep red. I'm going to be applying my red with pine oil. This is pine oil. I got mine from a painter's collection. It's uh, what was left over from Agnes Wren's um, supplies, and you don't have to buy it there. I think Maryland also has it. It's not cheap, so if you don't want to buy it right now, I understand. Just use your um, pen oil. Um, if you want to use a drying pen oil, it would work better, but, uh, but I think you may have trouble because it, um, you're, it's going to take a long time to complete the outline on this and if you want your oil to stay open you might need to use the open oil. This is the liner I'm using in pine oil then I'm going to dip it in my best black I'm going to kind of roll it in my best black and I hope that this is not going to mess things up but I'm going to start in the center and work out. Oh need a little more paint. Well, let's wipe that off that just I'm not very really happy with that. It's another nice thing about using the um, the Sharpie is that you can you can wipe it off. Okay, here we go. I'm just doing the outlines. You're going to have to keep going in your black. Don't worry if it's not dark enough on this fire. You can always go over these lines again. You don't have to make them too thick on this fire. Okay. 
I'm using my turntable. I find that it works very well for this application. Okay, the hardest thing is staying in, in the space, but I think you can still see me, so I'm not going to worry about that. Now, this is the section that's going to be painted red. Start in the middle of this piece and work out. Do not um, try to work from the outside in. You'll end up getting your hand in everything. The other nice thing about pine oil is that you can apply it to your pen once, and it lasts a really long time. You can go back in and out of the paint quite a bit. Okay. The other thing is if you don't have a steady hand, and I don't have a steady hand, um, doing it on a turntable can really make a difference when it comes to steadying your hand and making it possible, perhaps, to use a liner in place of a, a pen. My daughter would be going nuts right now if she had to listen to the pen make these noises that it normally makes. Now you can see there, I kind of went back over and that was a mistake. If it's too light, just leave it. Okay, now if, it's, if you do have a problem like that, like here I have a few that are out, you can play with them. But I would say don't play with them too much because what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna hate yourself. Um, I would like to even this up here a little bit though. You have to keep wiping off your Pico Pay if you, if you um, mess things up. And you have to fix things as you go. If you wait and you fix these later, um, let me see here, let me fix this. You're just gonna get in your own way. There we go, much better. Okay, and um, I'm moving it out so you can see a little better. I'm gonna come down here. And do this. When you do the patterns on these sections, it will also take away from any imperfections. So don't worry about it. If you're a beginner, this is an excellent exercise to learn how to use this kind of a, a brush. Or if you're using a pen, it's a good pen work exercise. When I did it with the pen, um, I used a larger pen like this, a larger point on it, uh, just because I wanted these to be thick. So can you see that? Yeah, I wanted it to be thick. There we go. I think you can see that better. Okay. So um, now this section here, I'm going to start doing these. This is the pattern. Remember, Zentangles is a repetitive pattern. You do one side, and I'll show you how to do the patterns you need to do for today. This is the only, these are the only patterns you do. Try to get them to touch the edge if you can. Oops, need a little more pine oil. There we go. Oh, that one is not right. This will be fiddly. You'll have to go back and play with it. Clean it up from time to time. But like I said, it's a good practice. 
It's a challenge for everyone, I think. Um, hang on. I have to remember that these are supposed to go like this. Okay, that didn't work. Where's my... The other thing I keep handy are my Q-tips. They're wonderful for something like this where you are you may not have a real steady hand. Now you'll see how to clean it up while you're working on it. The other thing might be that you might want to say, oh, never mind, I'll just wipe it off. And that you can do that too. That's perfectly fine. Now, I'm going to be putting red paint over this section. So as long as I get the bulk of the paint off, I should be okay. All righty. I'm going to go back over this. And we'll do this. It's better if you see it head on as you're doing it. Okay, now as we come down the other direction, this way, the key is to match this side to the other side. That's why you see I didn't go over, I didn't want to start over here too much because I might get in it. Okay. And the key is to keep these kind of V'd. They can't be straight. That's what my problem was getting to be, was that they were getting too straight. They can be light. If they aren't all the same depth, that's fine right now because you can go back on the second coat and darken them. You're going to have to because you're going to be painting over these anyway. And so you're going to have to go over them on the second coat and darken them. But this way, at least you have the outline to work from. Okay. And go back and make any corrections you need to make. I need to make one here. And I need to make one here. Okay. So that's what I have so far. Okay. Now I'm going to start on this side because I don't want to get, oh, one more place here. Now pine oil will dry, and that's one of the things that's nice about it is that it will dry. So um, Before you fire it, I would let it set overnight so you don't have any issues with it not drying properly. Oops, got a little too soupy there. Get a little, I got too much on my brush. Get a little off. It's a little soupy. We're going to get a little less soupy on this one here. It's not, this is not easy, but if you're a beginner, 
Some beginners really like to do a lot of line drawing and, and small things like this. And this is a good practice. It's a good practice no matter whether you're a beginner or not. Okay. Sorry, I wish this went a little faster, but it really doesn't. If you need to back into it, I would say go up a little bit into that and then come down through it. It just seems like you get a better result. And then we're going to do the, the uh, lines here now. I have to do it this way because... Um, I can't put my hand over on that side anymore. Remember, the other thing is, if you don't want to do a lot of these, do them, uh, do fewer of them. Oh, sorry. I keep getting carried away. I keep forgetting I should be on an angle like that. I think I need a little more oil, but I'd like to get that last one done. Okay, go through and clean them up. If you push the paint towards the line that you already have there, um, it cleans up a little easier. Ah. See, I use my They're not going to be perfect. Just touching up to make sure the edges are there. Okay, and now I'm going to do this side. Oop. You can see that one here. Let me. I'm going to go back to my palette and just wipe off. I've got a little too much oil, and I think it's on the palette, so I just wiped it off. Okay. Yeah, that's better. Am I still in frame? I don't think I am. Hang on. Okay, I moved it over so I should be in frame. I'm going to come down here. Now, this section, oh, that's going to be done. This is black and white. This section's black and white. This section's black and white. This is the section I have to fill in because I have to put red on it next time. So... Now, if your black isn't that dark on this fire, that's fine. You've got another fire. And you don't have to be as precise on the next fire because there will be a background on there for you to work with. So, Oh, sorry, I'm in the way there. I shouldn't have done that. I'm trying to paint so I'm not in your way so you can see what's going on. Okay, I gotta clean it up right there. Okay. And now we're gonna go to the other side and do the same thing. Okay. 
Now, there's another area that you may want to do on this fire. It's entirely up to you and how sick you are of working on this. <laughs> uh, if, it, if it's too tedious for you, I would say just do the portion I'm going to show you. But you could do, um, you could go back and put, this has little, like this. And if you put them in now and they aren't dark enough, the next fire, you can really darken them or attach them to the sides. That's something you could do. So think about it. I mean, look how simple it is. You just do the color, do the stripes right next to each other. Make sure you have enough paint on your brush and just do them. Simple, huh? And you could do it on both sides that way. That much is done for you for next time. In fact, I think I'm just going to do that on both sides because, it, look, it didn't take any time at all. But remember, these are straight across. I've got to fix this. I've got a little, oops, got a little. And this side part is not going to have any red over it, so it's going to show. So you want to make sure that you... Do a good job with them. You don't really need to draw that out. You can kind of figure it out pretty easily. There's also this area here where if you want to do these, you can. You do this. These are more difficult. They're little hearts, but they're like curly Q hearts. And if you do them on this fire, you can go back and add more black to them on the next fire, and you may be happier with the result, and you only have to do two fires. If you do them on the next fire, then you will have to go back and you may want them darker, and you may have to do an extra fire. I'm just trying to save you from having the red firing out because a lot of us have, have talked about that. The red is very likely to fire out. And you want to be very careful about that. Now, this carnation, I have not had it fire out. I think I either live right or it's a really good paint. <laughs> and I would suspect it's a really good paint, but... Where it goes over into the other black, just leave it and then bring it down. Okay, so that's how that side would look. And then you can do the same thing on this side over here. Um, the middle section here is going to be lumpy. And um, I think I left that to the last time. But if you want to see how to do it, if you're adventurous, let me pull my pattern over here so I can see. This is the section we're going to be doing right here. It's like a fish scale. You do a lump, a lump, then three lumps, and then you fill in in between the base of these. And I'll show you what that is. If you want to try that, you can. 
You do a lump, lump, then you start in the middle, but you have to finish it out on either side. And remember, you can darken this next time. So if you do it this time, you have the opportunity to darken it on the next fire. Then you're gonna go back and you're gonna fill in this section here, kind of like a little like a little half circle and you're gonna fill it in like this. It turns out really cool, and you can go all the way down doing that. Then the last thing you're going to do, and you can do both sides over here if you want, is go around the whole outside. So let me go around this section here. Always look at your brush. Right then I noticed my brush was looking terrible. It had a big lump on it and I didn't want that. I'm only going up to this part. And I'm not gonna do this part yet. Okay, now I'm going to take and paint in the red. I want the red here now so that I have another fire to play with it if it doesn't look right. So that's why you want to do it now. Now, I discovered, I didn't discover this actually, it was Randy's mixture. Randy suggested you use a half mixture of oil of copabia and mineral oil. And I thought, oh yeah, right, mm -hmm, that's not going to work. Well, guess what? It goes on darker and more evenly than anything I have ever used in my life. So, you're gonna go around the edge like this. I'm using a number 10 now. You can use whatever you want. You, I would suggest you use a brush that's fairly large because you've got a large area to paint in here. And you're gonna edge it out Then you're going to start filling it in. And you would use Persian red, carnation, blood red, whatever you wanted to use for this. Ah, I fear I'm getting in the way over here, but it's not as easy as, as you would think it would be. Okay. And then you start pulling the color in. Now you're going to let this sit overnight. You're going to let it dry completely. 
See how smooth that goes on? I could not believe how smooth this mixture of copaiba and mineral oil went on. Now, it wouldn't be cheap, obviously. Copaiba is not cheap. Um, but I was, I was pretty shocked when I tried it. And look at how rich the color is. I find that this particular mixture that Randy suggested works best on cheap china. If you're painting on Dresden, if you're painting on German china or Bavarian china, you don't really need an oil that's gonna, I mean, you could use anybody's oil, I think, and it would just flow on beautifully. That's just the way those that china is. But if you're using a cheap china that you bought um, uh, maybe at the store or um, resale and you don't know what kind of china it is. It's hard for me to do this backward. It's like this and we just get this here. Come on, baby. There we go. I'm trying to get the edge and it's not easy. Um, then this oil seems to help it smooth better. I have a a plate that I'm doing the next Valentine project on, and I could not get the paint to move on it for love nor money. And that's when I discovered this mix of, uh, I already had mixed it up because I didn't want to forget what Randy told us at the Indiana school. And um, so I, I thought, well, that's what he told us to try. Let me try it. And by golly, it's beautiful. Okay, just gonna. Yeah, so I don't know that you're going to get people to share what they use, but um, PPIO, uh, Por pa Porcelain Painters International Online, you can get a membership to that. And the Q&A, I think you have to be a member in order to get to the Q&A, but that's a good resource for people. Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to do is come back. do my black because as you can see black will not interfere with the red because it's a darker color oh except when you do something stupid like that hang on I have to move it a little further up because I need to be able to get under it there we go I knew I needed more space for my hand to be on the Lazy Susan, and I should have moved it, but I didn't. Okay. Now, when that happens, what do I do? Let's correct this down here first. I'm just going to take my red, because I know my red pretty well. I think my red is strong enough that it can absorb this. So let's see. Oh. Ah, I have to lift it. Sorry, people. Just use the side of my brush. And then I'll put this back up here. That's pretty good. Now, I'm not going to do this side yet because I have to finish all the little intricacies that go with it, but I think you get the idea. Oh, I'm sorry. I would also do this up here. Turn it upside down. If you're working on a Lazy Susan, like I am right now, the key to having a good outcome is making sure you have enough room to put your hand. Okay. 
Oops. Need a little more color here. And again, let me see if I can get that red to absorb. See, I use the tip of my brush, the side of it, and just kind of pull it away, pull it down. Oh, that's what we're going to do on this fire. That's the first fire. You're going to go through, do all the black uh, pattern on it um, if you want to. You don't have to. Um, if you're not confident, if you feel you're going to put your hand in stuff, stop and fire it. Don't try to do all the pattern just because I did all the pattern. If you don't have a Lazy Susan, see if you have one somewhere in the house that you used for cakes or something. Take some, um, take some of your, um, what's it called, um, duct tape, double it up and put it on there and then put your piece on there and hopefully it will hold it still for you so that you can work. Um, if you need to elevate it, you can put a book or something thin on, on the one side. I like this one because I can adjust how it elevates. If you find one like that, it's a keeper. Even if you don't think you'll ever use it, get it. Uh, I have another one um, that adjusts, but it only adjusts to certain increments like low, medium, and high. And it has like a place where you rest, you know, you, it, you go up and down like this. And um, it doesn't always work in the one I want it to work in. <laughs> so um, I'm glad you could all join me. Brand new year. Um, the, we'll do the second fire on this next time. We're going to apply more red, basically, and then darken some of the black. Um, I'm going to finish all the pattern today so that before I fire it, I have all the pattern on there. And that will save us time next week. Okay, pick up those brushes. Keep painting. See you next time. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed the program. And I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.